Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about Mystery Science Theater 3000, episode 1107, The Land That Time Forgot. I think when it comes to Mystery Science Theater 3000 movies, most of them are pretty crappy movies and pretty terribly produced. And The Land That Time Forgot is an exception in the fact that it actually looks fairly competently made for its time period, which was 1975. It looks like kind of a big production, big... Well, okay, Star Wars came out two years later, and there's Jaws. Actually... I'm going to take a lot of that back because this was not, this was not a very well, I thought, you know, honestly, I thought it was the 60s and even though I looked all this up, I just opened up the thing and I went, oh, it's 75, that's, that's not good for 75, but it's not as bad as most Mystery Science Theater 3000 episodes are. Wow. You know, I, I really thought it was like a better movie. <laughs> I thought, oh, this is like... 70 at latest 75 holy shit okay so i was gonna say a thing about how it's interesting that mystery science theater did a movie that was a little better made but taking that back it is better made for a mystery science theater 2000 episode movie wise and you know it is interesting to think with avalanche and with this with them working on films that were this was actually a hit it was like the 12th highest grossing film at the british box office in 1975 i'm not sure why but apparently it was and uh for them to do a doug mcclure movie which i think they do in another one at the earth's core later but i haven't gotten that far or doug mcclure's involved somehow and this director also i don't think it's as flat out <laughs> wow realizing this came out the same year as jaws changed a lot for me seeing them do kind of a more of a film that had i guess sort of more resonance at the time but not really since i don't think most people like remember this movie at all and i don't know if it did anything in america really couldn't find much about that was uh interesting and particularly doug mcclure who is the inspiration for troy mcclure and a couple other 70s actors i found this film kind of an interesting thing to riff on i think they had a lot of fun with it it showed their outward nerdiness throughout this one they had a lot of weirder nerdy references um particularly baron vaughn tom servo kept making these like multi-layered casting things i believe one was like matthew lillard is donald sutherland in the andy cap story and they kept doing those multi-layered things which was like so dorky and nerdy it's hard to wrap your head around that one i mean this is kind of a really dorky movie of its time it was actually one of the drafts was written by sci-fi and fantasy author michael moorcock so if you're gonna go super nerdy and dorky on any of the movies i guess this is one of them although it's already mystery science theater so you're sort of already at the party anyway they do that quite well they make one of the guys of the bots had a really philosophical kind of riff which was like is war just a bunch of people playing pranks on each other but in the end they all die <laughs> which is like holy fuck sorta and the water world joke was like so good where he's like jonah how do you drink and he goes well have you ever seen the movie water world and he's like ew you drink copies of water world like i don't think overall i was laughing throughout this one as much but i will probably remember more riffs from this than any of them like resonated a lot with me a lot of the riffs in this this does also have some continuity particularly the water thing seems to keep they keep having problems with the water technology thing but also the easter eggs of of finding out that there is kind of a connection between the invention exchanges and the rifts and that they've been ripping them off to make invention exchanges which they find out with elder pump because i guess they mentioned that in a previous one i actually didn't notice that but a lot of people said that's something like netflix likes to have a lot of continuity so you can sort of binge a certain show and i don't know if mystery science theater it's a little harder because they're like 90 minutes and they're longer and it's harder to binge and i i don't think that works as well people i've talked to are like slowly working through the season more than the ones who've just like gone through it straight away it's a harder thing to invest in because it's not just like 14 hours it's like it's like a lot more than an average netflix show i wouldn't mind if they just didn't do continuity to be honest but i, I like how they do it in this this feels fresher and funnier and it kind of rewards you in a way that you like it wasn't max says like no it's just an easter egg it's not continuity and they even have the dino hotel which of course is a reference to uh where the mystery science theater 3000 revival league podcast is recorded and they're uh they were a huge sponsor of the kickstarter campaign and apparently there was some sort of a deal when they backed as much that they'd be mentioned in a sketch but apparently like it kind of organically sort of happened because of the dinosaurs in this according to jonah but that was of course on the revival league podcast i'm not saying that they paid jonah to cover it up or something they say that they asked to be in a sketch they made a deal with joel but it's interesting that apparently they just felt like it organically worked on this one and i think they got it to organically work i'd also like to put out that my name is in the credits of this one i'll have a picture up right there from my instagram story 
through with my uh, crappy arrow there. So I got into the episode of this one, so I guess I should naturally just like it, because this is probably what I will be immortalized most for, is this episode of Mystery Science Theater. But hey, there's worse things to be immortalized for. I quite liked a lot of the host segments. The only one I didn't love was the crow wanting to be a human thing. I really didn't like that one. That's like the first one that's flat out bombed for me. It really felt rushed. It didn't really feel funny. It did, I don't think there could have been enough charisma to get that to work anyway. It just didn't work at all. I, I, I did not like that sketch. I like what the dinosaurs taste like. Their dinosaur mosaic ranch thing and pretty much all the, the host segments I liked quite a bit. It was just that one. Just uh, Even the like the space octopus thing I thought was really inventive. This episode is kind of interesting because I think this movie is naturally kind of like a boring thing you'd have on in the background and you'd start being like oh I'm totally down for this and then you end up like you realize you're like filing away papers and this movie's still going. I think the difference between Avalanche and Star Crash and other films is like they have a little more interestingness going on and this is like a billion other movies but it's a billion other movies but they're boring and so I flow wise is like the one that like I didn't get the deep hurting yet but this is the movie I probably even though it was the most professionally made I probably liked the least I guess but I guess I'd give it props for being a little better made but if this had been made around the year that time travelers had been made I would think this is a genius movie that they made but 1975 it's just like that really that really killed it for me I just this was yet another good episode it showed its weaknesses particularly I think I've seen videos and reviews are saying like the bots don't work as well it doesn't flow the same and things and naturally I think it is a different flow because of the way it's produced and the people and everything like that that's a natural thing I don't think that's a negative thing but that one sketch where crow wants to be human or whatever or doesn't want to be human that one showed that for me that's the only one that I feel like didn't work under that production process but the rest of it was super nerdy super dorky and I thought that really worked for it I think that's what works for the show when you go oh man this is such a dumb joke but I love it but then like going like wow I didn't see that coming even the world star hip-hop joke oh the Doug McClure song I noticed the songs in the theater keeps going periscope joke which is <laughs> is funny and even the social anxiety cameraman when it's like a wide shot that was a good one i like the land the time forgot episode i don't think it's one that i will immediately think of from this season it's probably one if i was going through like an episode guide to go oh yeah that one was kind of cool i think it's one that you might forget over the other ones but it's actually probably a better one overall its lows might be lower than other episodes but i think its highs are in the grand tradition of mystery science theater and it's cool to see doug mcclure live on in the infamy that people like joe on Baker would go into and uh, Rosh Dower and people like that and I think Doug McClure kind of owns up to it in a way I think Doug McClure is ready for that I mean you know Simpsons did it and all that stuff but I think Doug McClure is ready for that kind of a thing this is such an odd movie it's interesting the movies that Shout Factory has given them because I think this kind of like dorkier kind of fantasy film is ripe for that kind of a thing because this isn't one I think that people would particularly like although Edgar Rice Burroughs you know a famous author and stuff but not all of his stuff's been made into the greatest movies like you know most Tarzan things ever made although there's some that are good but I think a lot of it is stuff that you're like Ugh. you know obviously I want this episode to be the greatest because my name's in it and I think the Dino Hotel thing is I've been listening to the Revival League podcast and particularly the episode where they talk about everyone in a, in a row I think uh brings that up and even I've been checking out the AV Club's coverage of Mystery Science Theater as they review them this episode highlights what's so great about this cast is they can get very dorky they can get very nerdy they can make inside jokes they even make some weird Minnesota jokes they make a dino hotel joke even though those people paid for it and stuff I think it works in a way that feels organic to the way mystery science theater is which is throwing out references they just want to do and I think that's one of the things that works so well about the show and something even creatively I appreciate as someone who reviews like whatever I want to talk about I think that's something the show does so well the idea that there is this continuity but it's not like a deep continuity that kind of rewards fans who are watching these episodes I think is kind of cool I'm curious where the water thing goes I think this is another good episode i think it is probably one that most people will sadly probably underestimate but i think it's one you shouldn't i think it's actually a pretty good episode it might have had that one host segment i didn't particularly like but everything else in it i think is really really funny and really kind of highlights to me why i like this new mystery science theater so far it feels very joel which i kind of like particularly like having space octopus and things like that naturally i kind of love the joelness in this and how the new cast is kind of making their own kind of newer references dorkier and 
and nerdier references that kind of go hand in hand with Mystery Science Theater while doing kind of their own weird bits of comedy that they can then play off of within the movie I think shows what's so awesome about the show and I think this this episode like most of the episodes in this new season I've seen so far highlights to me why Mystery Science Theater was such an amazing show and a show that I can't simply get past and I'm sorry I wore this t-shirt I realized when I started filming, I was like, oh my god, I'm wearing my Kickstarter backer t-shirt in this. But I guess it's appropriate since I was in that episode and I'll show the picture again. I think this is a very good Mystery Science Theater episode. I don't think it is probably one of the greatest of all time. I think it's a really good one that surprised you with the amount of comedy and weirdness that goes on in it and how they can make a probably forgettable movie that you'd probably fall asleep watching and wake up and go, wait, what happened into a much more memorable experience and then taking it off into the stratosphere with multi-layered cast and all the sorts of weird comedy and references that they throw at you during this episode. So if you have seen Mystery Science Theater 3000, episode 1107, The Land That Time Forgot, and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.